It's our pleasure to welcome to the studio the owner of Real Salt Lake, the Real Monarchs and Utah Royals FC. And he's got a big smile on his face <laughs> because Real Monarchs are USL champions. Congratulations. What a great accomplishment for that team. And thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you. What was it like? <clears throat> I know as an owner, this is a dream, right? This is why you do this. This is why the players play and the coaches coach. What was it like to hold that trophy and realize that dream? Well, you know, uh, there's 32 teams. So likely you'll win a championship every 18 years if you're average. Yeah. Uh, but to uh, have been in the league now our fifth year and to beat the two-time national champion on their field when in the prior two games no one's ever scored against them. So it was kind of a foregone conclusion. We were the underdogs landing in Louisville and they have a great team. They've invested well. I met with their owners and so I knew we had a swim upstream. But I also knew we had a team that was amazing. Uh, these are guys that know who they are. They fight for each other. Uh, I like a team that has a locker room that when you walk in it, we're not going to let each other down. I'm going to play hard because I support you. It's an unselfish team. It's a team that, that plays with, with real tight precision, and they deserved it. So it was fun to be in Louisville Sunday night. Uh, we had 200 fans. We flew down in the 737, and they had a great time, and we had a great fan section. Made a lot of noise, and uh, the TV cameras on ESPN were all over us, so it was, <laughs> it was fun to see our fans get recognition, our team get the recognition, and to hoist a trophy that's twice as heavy as MLS Cup. <laughs> they put more metal in this one. <laughs> okay, well, you'll take it, right? Yeah, we'll take it. What special about this team because I don't think anyone outside of their locker room and in your organization thought they were capable of this kind of a run. Well, the, the integration of our team is unique. There was a great article in Atletico magazine today. I read it eight pages and they nailed it. They, they said it's the Utah, the RSL model that's unique. And it's really how we come from the bottom up and how we, we work from the top down from our major league team. But no other second division team in MLS has a model similar to ours. Uh, and in building that, we were lucky to have three of our academy kids start the game. And we had five academy kids on the team, three started, but also Luke Mulholland, who's been a stalwart at RSL, was able to come down. He played 19 games MLS, 16 USL, but he was able to be a difference maker that made the difference. Then you've got the aspiring part of people that are on the edge becoming professional players. So everyone who plays on that team, we believe has a chance to take a step up or they're not on the team. And every year we evaluate that. Do we believe this player can make the leap? So you've got guys that are playing for a true, I want to improve myself, I want to improve the career and I want to help lift my fellow team members. And it's a, it's a potent mix. Uh, and we were able to play out through the playoffs, four wins. We beat Phoenix, who is the only team in soccer history in the United States to win 20 straight games. We beat them twice at home on their field. So we had a year of accomplishments, and uh, I, I want to just give all the credit to a great team, a great coaching staff, and a great front office that helped us get there. For you, this has to be gratifying because this is a confirmation that the academy model that you built, which is very unique here in the States, right. works. How gratifying was this? It, it is. It's. Uh, <clears throat> Oftentimes you have a dream, yeah. and you hope the dream yields results. Uh, we're, we're now sure that we're on the right path, that we're doing something that various European teams discovered, Barcelona, Netherlands teams, Man City. But we, we like to think we're one of the first and the most aggressive using the model to have 60 academy kids that live, breathe, and consume soccer and go to a RSL high school and have their training there, and they... They train right next to the Monarchs every day. So if one of these kids can show promise, we can walk him over to the Monarchs. So that, that integrated model is starting to show some, some big results. Now to Real Salt Lake. Before I move forward, sure. I wanted to ask you about this season, this past season. What are your thoughts on it? There were highs, there were lows. Ultimately, this team overachieved, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, the part of it is, is for who we are in the league we're in, we were definitely an overachiever. You've got LAFC, you've got Atlanta, you've got some real p Toronto. People that, that are really spending big money on some signature players. And we still focus around the teams, the star. This goes back to the Christ era, that we're going to be a working class team. 
We're going to be a team that we work together. While there may be one outstanding player, it's really that there's 11 guys on that field that play together. So we work a lot more on consistency among ourselves instead of one great star that can overcome it all. And that proves over time to be a good model. You know, Portland went to buy a great star and he didn't even play. And they'd spent over $8 million to get him and he doesn't even show up. And we beat Portland, you know. Seattle has one amazing acquisition that did prove to be the difference maker to get there. But if you look through the playoffs, we believe we played Seattle better than any other team. We held them scoreless in the first half on their field and we were able to come very close. It was there. So we think we're knocking on the, the top door. We think we're knocking on that door. We need, in our mind, three to four pieces that would make us that very top caliber. And obviously being a team that cares about winning, we're working on that. <laughs> well, that's something to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, and we'll usually, be... typically, and we were talking about this before, so fans understand, typically yeah. mid-season because of the way the European schedule well, works. Well, one of the acquisitions that people need to understand in soccer where we play counter to the world soccer, yeah. they're in the middle of their season that ends in May, June. And if we're going to make a, an acquisition of a team in South America or Europe, we need to get them on the end of their season usually because great players are not going to leave mid-year. Right. And so every team has to be attuned to what that June acquisition is. So people should always keep an eye on what is RSL going to do in June. Now, obviously, we're going to do a few pieces now. But I keep my eye on June if I was a really astute stalker watcher. There you go. That's, that's for the fans right there. Well, you got some big decisions to make in the offseason. Yeah. You got to hire a head coach. Right. You got to hire a GM. And you want those guys to be the right people. Right. What are you looking for in those two positions? Well, the one thing we talk about always is consistency. If you look at the Jazz and you say, what made the Jazz a great team? 20 playoffs. Does anyone doubt they were consistent? It was Sloan there for a few years? Uh, was Malone there, was Stockton. The Jazz are a great model to say consistency pays dividends. Uh, there are teams that are changing coach and GM every year. I, could, I won't name names because these are friends. Right. But they're on their fourth coach and GM change in four years. Well, with that inconsistency, they're never going to have time to develop. So we believe developing from the ground up, having people in reserve, Jaime Snolavi has been with the organization 10 years. He's been assistant coach. He's gone through a lot of training. So when the time came, he could step up as interim coach and go nine games undefeated. So we didn't have to reach to the outside in a panic. We have people growing up in the organization. When we had to change head coaches, Freddie was there. Freddie's been with me now 10 years. He's been through all pieces of the organization. And he's one of the best strategic coaches I've ever met. He has great strategy. He's always been writing our strategy. He now just got to execute his own strategy. And he had the second best results in all of MLS over the last part of the year. So, you know, obviously we're giving great consideration to consistency and coaches that have brought us to championships and outsized results. But that's not by accident. The fact is we're always looking for that assistant coach that has skill sets that can grow. And just like in the Monarchs, if we don't believe you can grow to be an MLS player, you probably aren't going to be there. But we don't know that you'll get there, but we have an expectation you could. And I think that's the consistency model that we'd like to telegraph to our fans and people that follow is we don't feel too waved by the world. We know where we're going. We're going to keep training people that, that are in that same theory from 13 to 15 to 17 to 19 to Monarchs to Real. And eventually the people down below know what they should be doing when they get to the top. And that's, that's been Freddie, if you watch. He's uh, been th at the assistant coach at the academy to every step through the way. And he's had great success. You have a time frame on this? You, yeah. There's an urgency? You, there is. We need to get things done. Uh, our goal is to make the announcements somewhere first week in December. We want to get past Thanksgiving. We want to have fun with the Monarchs. We want to celebrate that. And then we want to announce, you know, the, the positions that we've, that we've signed, you know, in the front office and uh, in the coaching staff. And that, but we're well on the way to making those decisions. So the uh, process is playing out the way I thought it should. And finally, I want to ask you about the Royals. Yeah. Uh, two seasons now here. Yeah. Star power. 
Laura Harvey's done a great job, but they haven't made the playoffs. Yeah. Are you happy with the progress of the franchise at this point? Well, it was a new franchise. We inherited what we got. There is a very difficult, if not impossible, way to improve your team. The only way you can improve is through the draft. There is no other model. And so we worked hard to change the rules this year. There are ways we can uh, balance our teams. So we had a team. It was assigned to us, essentially. We could make a few changes, a few draft picks. Uh, we got one great one uh, when we got Kristen Press, but we traded away a lot of our draft picks. Yeah. So Kristen had to out be very heavy in that choice. I do think we've identified the pieces we need to be a playoff team. North Carolina is a great team, and they're kind of like a team uh, like the, the Boston uh, Patriots. Once you've got a great team, they don't die overnight. So North Carolina is always going to be a powerhouse over the next number of years. So we have to build a team that can meet that powerhouse, and we think we're getting closer. I do think we'll be a playoff team next year. I do think we'll add some pieces that'll help us. But I don't have any illusions that North Carolina's not already a great team. <laughs> Two championships are a great team. They're going to be hard to knock off. Well, indeed. Future's bright for the Royals, Real Salt Lake. And we know what the future is. The future is now for the Monarchs, their yep. champions. A parade in Harriman, 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Yeah. It's going to be a party. Well, this is something. You don't get that many championships. No. So if you go through Utah, <laughs> you got to go back to the blaze way back in time to even find that championship. But... We've had two national championships in our recent pro history, the last 20 years, uh, Real in 09 and now this in 19. I would invite Utah to celebrate the fact that in a very competitive league, the USL is a tough league, 32 teams, a lot of aspirational teams in that, and to beat Phoenix and to beat Louisville and to land on this platform, you gotta come celebrate. It's a Utah team that has reached national prominence and. We've got free food at 4 o'clock at Harriman City offices tomorrow, and we'll have some uh, just a fun time celebrating with the team members that we've got that championship. There you go. Great opportunity to celebrate this team, USL champions. Deloitte, congratulations on this title, and we look forward to the future. Sure appreciate it. Thank you. Yep.